Hello there and welcome to Star Wars Lore. Today's video is on the Praetor Mark II class battlecruiser. Our built by Kuat Drive Yards as a replacement for the smaller Praetor battlecruiser that was built during the time of the Republic, the Praetor Mark II is considered to be the largest battlecruiser design known. Now because they didn't build them all the same size, their length tended to vary from between 4800 to 8000 meters long. And according to the Nexus War College system, which is used to define a starship's classification from its length, the 8000 meter long Praetors were technically dreadnoughts, not battlecruisers. But in this case an exemption was made and it was classified as a battlecruiser, because its armament was considered to be pretty poor when compared to other dreadnoughts. As a battlecruiser however, the Praetor Mark II was pretty well armed, possessing some 60 quad heavy turbolasers, 40 medium turbolaser batteries, 30 twin ion cannons, 10 twin long range ion cannon batteries and 10 heavy tractor beam emitters. It was also equipped with some pretty decent hull armor and some strong deflector shields. And for propulsion, the Praetor had three primary engines and four secondary engines, and much like the Super Star Destroyer, the Praetor didn't have a visible reactor bulb on the bottom of the ship like normal Star Destroyers, having its reactor equipment hiding within thick layers of armor instead. The Praetor Mark II also comes with a hangar bay, but unlike other ships from the Star Destroyer family who had their hangars on the underside of the ship, the Praetor had its hangar up front in the nose. Now, although its size wasn't much bigger than that of a Star Destroyer's hangar, it could still carry some 120 fighters as well as a number of shuttles and walkers. And for those of you wondering what that big cylinder on the back of the ship is as well, it's the ship's transport ring, which can be used to store many things like supplies and equipment. Now, the Praetor carried a crew of some 109,000 officers and enlisted crew, and unlike many others of the Star Destroyer line, the Praetor wasn't given a large T-shaped bridge tower. Instead, it was given a command bridge that was similar in appearance to that of the Venator and Secutor class Star Destroyers. However, unlike the Venator and Secutor bridges, which were raised up and exposed, the Praetor's command bridge was kept low and close to the surrounding superstructure, thus providing a much smaller target profile. Now, despite being a pretty decent design from Quiet Drive Yards, only a handful of these ships were actually ever built, simply because Imperial strategies didn't favour battlecruiser designs. And since the Praetor cost 5 times more than one Star Destroyer and wasn't considered to be as versatile as a Star Destroyer, or even as effective at being a terror weapon like the Dreadnoughts, the production of the Praetor Mark II was stopped. And as a result of the Empire's focus, the Mark IIs, along with any other battlecruiser designs, were kept primarily in the core to defend key areas and would occasionally be sent out to the fringes of Imperial territory on what were considered to be dangerous missions and therefore needed some extra firepower. One example of this was the Praetor Mark II battlecruiser The Helmsman, captured by Admiral Mills Giel, and I hope I'm saying his name right. The Helmsman was assigned to lead a secret armada on a mission to bring a creature known as a Teasel to Coruscant. Now the Teasel was essentially a living hyperspace communications device, and by being used as a comms tool by the Navy, it would give them much better coordination against rebels. Now the Helmsman carried this creature inside its transportation ring. While en route, however, the secret armada was attacked and the Teasel was killed by rebels. In order to penetrate the helmsman's heavy armor and shields, rebels had to heavily modify their stolen TIE fighters so they could hit the transport ring. They were, of course, successful in inflicting enough damage to the transport ring to kill the creature and managed to escape before the helmsman's gun batteries could properly retaliate. Now, as a little side note before I end the video, I would also like to mention that the Praetor Mark II was originally designed alongside others, to be used as a Super Star Destroyer Executor in The Empire Strikes Back. Now, as we know, that's not the design they ended up going with for the Executor, but they held on to the design and later used it in some Marvel Star Wars comics as Admiral Giel's flagship, thus bringing the Praetor Mark II into existence. But now I want to hear your thoughts. What do you think of the Praetor Mark II Battlecruiser? Do you think the Empire made the right choice to drop it, or should they have made more? Let me know down below, and until next time, take care, and may the Force be with you.